Hi friends, I'm Arpita Karwa and I'm back with the next video in the paper 1 series in which I will be talking about the important areas that you must cover in the section government and higher education. So in this video I shall be talking about the 8 important areas which you must study in the section government and higher education and all the important points that you must cover in these areas. So we will be talking about all these sections one by one. So the first area that you must cover is Rajya Sabha and its power. You should know what is Rajya Sabha, who all are the members of Rajya Sabha and what are the powers of the members of Rajya Sabha. So in short if I would try to summarize, uh, Rajya Sabha is known as the upper house and it is permanent body that means it cannot be dissolved unlike Lok Sabha. Also, the total members that can be there in Rajya Sabha is 250. Apart from that, you should remember that the tenure of each member is 6 years. So, a member serves in Rajya Sabha for a period of 6 years and the members are elected by MLAs. Okay, so they are not directly elected, they are elected by MLAs. People don't elect the members of Rajya Sabha. A quick tip that I would like to give here is that do remember that president nominates 12 members in Rajya Sabha based on their excellence in the field of literature, sports, acting. So Sachin Tendulkar and Amitabh Bachchan they served as members of Rajya Sabha for some time. So you should remember that 12 members are nominated by president on the basis of their excellence in the specific fields. The next area which you must study is Lok Sabha and its powers. Lok Sabha is called the lower house and unlike Rajya Sabha it is non-permanent. Okay, so it can be dissolved anytime. Maximum members which can be there in Lok Sabha is 550 and all the members which are there in Lok Sabha they are directly elected by people. So Lok Sabha is lower house because in this house all the members are directly elected by the people and this is how democracy functions. Tenure of each member is 5 years unlike Rajya Sabha. In Rajya Sabha the tenure of each member is 6 years. And one quick tip I would like to give here is that Lok Sabha mein jitni seats hoti hai har state ke liye it depends upon the size of the state. For example Uttar Pradesh is the biggest state so Uttar Pradesh se 80 members Lok Sabha mein jate hai whereas Mizoram and uh, Meghale they are the smallest state so wahan se ek member jata hai. Apart from that you should also remember that Delhi says 7 members Lok Sabha mein jate hai. So 7 members are selected as MLAs of Delhi and they go to Lok Sabha. So this is a short introduction to Lok Sabha. There are a lot of other things that you must study in regards to Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha, the powers and the authority and several other important factors. But since we are summarizing it in this video lecture, I would move to the third important area. The next area that you must cover is precedent and its powers. So you must know that president is the first citizen of India and president is also the head of state. He is not the head of government, he is the head of state. And he has a lot of powers in his hand. Uh, he is the one who signs the annual budget. So that is the financial power of the president. Then uh, he is the one who appoints so many people. Like he appoints the chief justice. He appoints the uh, chief election commissioner. He is the one who appoints prime minister. And he is the one who appoints the chief vice chancellors of central universities. So these are few important powers which a president has. And that doesn't mean that the Prime Minister doesn't hold any value because the next section that we are studying is Prime Minister and his powers. Prime Minister is said to be the head of execution and he is also said to be the head of government. President is the head of state whereas Prime Minister is the head of government. He has to do a lot of duties, he has to perform a lot of services for the country out of which the most important one is that he represents the country internationally. So he participates in the international policy formulation and he also represents his country in the international meetings. So just like we have Mr. Modi who keeps on going from country to country to represent India. So he represents India and talks about Indian culture, talks about the policies of India internationally. Apart from that, one important thing which is related to Prime Minister is that he is the head of Council of Minister. 
काउंसिल ऑफ मिनिस्टर्स एक ग्रुप है मिनिस्टर्स का जो प्राइम मिनिस्टर को असिस्ट करते हैं इन एग्जीक्यूटिंग द वर्क एंड ही इज सेट टू बी दी हेड ऑफ काउंसिल ऑफ मिनिस्टर सो प्राइम मिनिस्टर कैन बी सीन एज अ लिंक बिटवीन प्रेसिडेंट एंड काउंसिल ऑफ मिनिस्टर सो काउंसिल ऑफ मिनिस्टर को प्राइम मिनिस्टर हेड करता है एंड कोई भी चीज़ें अगर किसी को भी प्रेसिडेंट को बतानी है तो वो प्राइम मिनिस्टर के थ्रू ही बताई जा सकती है यू कैन नॉट अप्रोच द प्रेसिडेंट डायरेक्टली इट इज़ ओनली थ्रू प्राइम मिनिस्टर दैट यू गो एंड टॉक टू द प्रेसिडेंट द नेक्स्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट पिलर ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी इज सुप्रीम कोर्ट सुप्रीम कोर्ट के जो जजेस होते हैं वो प्रेसिडेंट अपॉइंट करता है एंड एनी पर्सन हु वॉन्ट्स टू बिकम अ जज इन सुप्रीम कोर्ट मस्ट have an experience of high court for फाइव years. So पाँच साल अगर उसने high court में काम किया है only then he can become a judge of Supreme Court. Apart from that, the retirement age of judges of Supreme Court is 65 years. And there are a lot of functions which are performed by Supreme Court. For example, if there is a dispute in two states, between like these two states there's a dispute then the matter will directly go to supreme court apart from that if uh, any person feels as if his fundamental right has been violated then he has the right to directly appeal in the supreme court any person who has lost a case in high court can appeal in supreme court so these are few important areas in which supreme court functions there's a important thing that you must note here there's a thing called pil public interest litigation which means that any poor person if he is unwilling or he doesn't have enough resources to fight a case then any person on the behalf of that poor person can go and fight the case and that is called public interest litigation in the interest of people of the country any other person can go and file the case on his behalf so this was a short introduction to supreme court now let's move on to the next segment now that we have talked about all the important institutions and uh, important bodies of government it is important that we also look at the fundamental rights and fundamental duties every year at least one question is asked from this section so you must have all these rights and duties on your tips when it comes to fundamental rights article number 14 to article 32 in the constitution talks about all the fundamental rights like right to equality right to freedom and recently in the right to freedom they have included right to education as well when we come to fundamental duties then we all have this duty towards our nation that we should respect the national anthem and the national flag we should also protect the natural environment so you should make a list of all these fundamental rights and fundamental duties and start learning them because these fundamental rights and duties are important if you look from the point of view of ugc net paper 1 So far we have discussed so much about Indian government all the important government bodies now it is important that we also look at higher education so when it comes to higher education what is important is that you know about the main institutions or the main bodies formed by government which are working in the field of higher education for example we have ugc we have upsc we have nta we have uh, ncert so all these important bodies must be known to the student uh, you must be aware of some basic points about all these bodies for example if we talk about ugc you should know that the full form of ugc is university grant commission it was set up in 1956 it has got like seven regional offices the head office is in delhi then we have offices in uh, pune bangalore kolkata and so on so forth the main purpose of ugc is to provide recognition to the universities and what is the motto of ugc it is also important the motto is gyan vigyan vimuktiye which in english means knowledge liberates so these are few important things that you must know about each government recognized a political and educational body for example you must know the full form of upsc you must know what is nta why is nta now working uh, towards conducting examination you should know a bit about ncert about cbsc so these are few important areas that you must touch if you are preparing for paper 1 
After knowing about the educational bodies, it is also important that you know about the major universities and colleges because every time they ask at least one question talking about the main universities, main colleges or main features of particular colleges. So you must know how many central universities are there in India. You must know which university was awarded as the best central university. You must be aware of the uh, first defense university, first open university. Then all these important areas you must touch like what is meta university. Meta university uh, basically resides in the motto that whole is greater than parts. So Delhi University may meta university sabse pehle start hua tha, which means that uh, Delhi University will collaborate with other universities and they will jointly start a program. So uh, Delhi University collaborated with Jamia Islamia and together they started a new course. So a joint degree was given by Delhi University and Jamia Islamia. So this is a concept of Meta University. So all these recent developments in the field of education, especially in the field of higher education, you must look at these developments and also you should know the major universities and where are they situated you should know that where is Delhi University where is Jamia Islamia where is JNU so all these important things you must keep in your mind so finally we have come to the end of this video I have tried to give you a glimpse of all the topics that you must study in the section of government and higher education if you like this video do give it a big fan thumbs up and also subscribe to my youtube channel because this video is a part of paper one series I'll be posting many such videos uh, talking about different areas that you need to cover in paper one apart from that you can also go to my website arpatakarva.com we are running a online course for UGC net English literature in which you are providing you with 700 plus audio lectures 200 plus PDFs and 200 plus mock tests you can find the details about my online course on my website apart from that if you are really a social media freak then do go and subscribe to my social media pages because we are running a free go net quiz we also post all the recent updates about UGC about NTA on the social media pages so if you're really enthusiastic then go and like my Facebook Instagram so that you are notified every time I post a new update so that's it for this video lecture we'll meet very soon in the next video lecture till the time we meet next happy learning keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpitakarva.com